for the people who don't know you, just kind of give us a brief introduction of who you are, and uh, we'll jump right into it. So my name's Alex Bosco. I'm the uh, CEO and founder of SB Tactical. Uh, I am the inventor of the Stabilizing Brace, and uh, I'm presently uh, the one who's trying to make sure that uh, that none of our gun rights get tramped on. So that's a that's a quick recap from the beginning to today. Today, gotcha. So for me, you know, I've been doing kind of my back my my research on the back end about it, and um, you know, you know, I've spoken on on many other occasions about some of the dealings that you have to deal with, and I just got I just got done speaking with. Kevin Brittingham of Q um, about the situation. You've been dealing with this for a lot longer uh, than than what Kevin is dealing with right now. So can you give us kind of like a brief history about what you've had to deal with <laughs> on on the on the side of dealing with the, getting the braces approved, all of the things you've had to deal with with respect to the ATF, so forth and so on. I mean, I've done this with, with you one time before, so I don't know if it makes sense to me to go back and tell yeah. you why I came up with the brace. I mean, I think most people know that at this point. I think where I can start off, I guess, um, it might be tactically the best place to start off is 2015 January SHOT Show when ATF dropped a bomb by telling everybody that if you put this thing to your shoulder, you've now redesigned it and uh, thereby making a lawful GCA firearm into an unlawful and unregistered NFA firearm. And for me, uh, I don't come from money. Um, I was in the Marine Corps. I was in the Army. I grew up in a good family. Um, but I started this company, and essentially, to me, it's an honor to have people purchase my product. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's been a, a fantastic run that we've gone through so far. Uh, from supplying Sig Sauer and being called the Sig Brace to creating SB Tactical, what it is today. And everybody knows it as the SB Tactical Brace now. Yeah. Uh, back in 2015, I was pissed. I was pissed because, you know, ATF had told me something, and I took what they had told me and told the customers, this is the way it is. And then in 15, ATF over political reasons, decided to say what they wanted to say. Yeah. And I think we all agree that what they said was wrong. As hell. <laughs> yeah. So after all these years, I, I made it my life's work to work with the ATF, all right, and say, look, it's wrong. That what, what you said back in 15 was wrong. And in 17, they agreed with me. And they said, you're right. You're right. We were wrong, and you can sporadically, occasionally, incidentally fire from the shoulder, and you're not going to go to jail. Mm hmm and from there, what I wanted to do was sit down with the ATF and come up with standards that allow the industry to understand what makes up a brace and what does not make up a brace. And the only way we were able to do it in the past is to look at the, the letters, the private letters that they submitted and people received and published online. It was the only way to do it. So yeah. we know that you've approved this brace. We know that you approved this brace and this brace and this brace. At this point, they've approved 15 different braces. Mm -hmm. I sat down with them and said, let's come up with standards and let's release those standards to the public. Well, originally they wanted to do that. And for years, I sat down with them with my attorneys, one of which I've told you before is Mike Sullivan, the former director of the ATF. He was appointed under Bush. He was a presidential appointee. Mm -hmm. Well, all these years of working with the ATF, I find it really odd that we've gotten to the point today where they go to Q in this case, a small little company, and we sell to just about every single OEM manufacturer in the market. They've gone to a small company and said, oh, you're doing that wrong. And instead of telling them why they're doing it wrong, they're saying we that it's been designed to be fired from the shoulder and therefore it's a short barreled rifle. Not well, these are the standards. You've stepped outside those standards, and now this is what you can do to remediate the situation. Q asked the ATF, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And you know what the ATF said? Well, you, I, we can't tell you what to do. Well, that's BS, man. You're the regulatory <laughs> agency. You're the people that tell us how what, we need to yeah. do, comply in order to not run afoul a foul of the ATF. It's crazy. It's crazy. We're in, we're in, we're in La La Land. Yeah, we are in no, La La. It, it, it really what it stinks of is an agency that is going above and beyond to make sure that it never has to be held accountable for anything it says or does. Because It's worse than that. Colin. I'll tell you why um, it's worse than that. 
because the people that are running the show, they are people in chief counsel's office at the ATF, mm -hmm. okay? It seems to me at this point that everything points to the direction that these people are, uh, are essentially political hacks, okay? They're, they're, they're activists that are attempting to do nothing else than to, than to frustrate the president's ability to be reelected in, in a month, okay? What better way to do that than to piss off the millions of Second Amendment owners that have purchased our products, three million plus braces on the market, our SB Tactical braces, okay? What better way to do that than to create this big mess under Trump's ATF? Yeah, well, yeah. it's not Trump's ATF, okay? These are people that have been there since Obama. Yeah. Trump, unfortunately, hasn't been able to take a flamethrower to that place yet and get rid of the hacks that are there. It's crazy. It's really crazy. Yeah. And it's, it's upsetting. It should upset anybody that, 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 that hears about it. I mean, this is, it's obscene. There is no other word that I can use at this point because we've done nothing other than to attempt to work with them to come up with standards. Have they come up with standards? No, no. they have not. Yeah. And I think that's and I think the reason why I wanted to speak with you is because I knew you'd be able to communicate that in a manner in which people would understand. I think a lot of people really don't understand how serious this is and also are unaware of all of the things that they've been doing in the past that are literally designed to frustrate us and to put us in a position where we really honestly can't exercise our right without the risk or the potential of us offending some law or breaking some law that could possibly land us in jail or being fined excessively. Um, I mean, we're talking about an upwards of 4,000 guns that were made by Q that were sent out to regular people who bought them with their own money under the premise of the guise that these guns were acceptable as they are, only to now find out, wake up in the morning and realize, holy crap, Mike, so you mean to tell me, theoretically speaking, I'm breaking the law right now as long as I continue to have and own this firearm that I paid with my own money and bought under good faith, believing that these were legal. And, and this is somehow supposed to keep who safe? It doesn't. It, it, well, it, it's funny you say that because the mandate, one of the mandates of the ATF is public safety, right? Yeah. So if public safety, let's, let's walk through this for one second, okay? If public safety is the issue, okay? What public safety issue do we have with a product, one of the braces that he has, okay, that, that, that Q made, we, it's, under our, it's under licensing with us, yeah. but that Q makes, he designed that brace. What problem? How does that make that gun a force multiplier or more lethal? It doesn't. It doesn't at all. Okay, well, then if it doesn't make it that way, then essentially what the ATF, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to translate here, but essentially – what the ATF is trying to say is that these types of guns are more dangerous and we think that they shouldn't be out in the street. Well, that's not your place, ATF. Yeah. It's not your job to promote gun control. It's not the IRS's job to promote for more taxes. If you have a problem with this product, what you can do is pick up the phone, talk, take the director of the ATF, Regina Lombardo, and she can call up Department of Justice, the president. She can do all these things and say – we think that these things are more lethal or whatever. She can come up and say what she wants to do, but she can't take it upon herself to go after people on, on standards that are not made publicly available and attempt to put people in prison, which is the highest. It's what, it's what the government can do to you. It's the worst thing they can do to you other than the death penalty is take away your rights and throw you in a prison cell. Yeah. And essentially what the ATF has done here with Kevin is that they've gone there under the guise of a criminal procedure for making short barreled rifles, which is a 10 year felony offense. And that you need to call back all these, like, what? You got to call back these guns? Yeah. Like, Kevin can't do that. <laughs> Nobody can do that. No one. Standards. Where, when did you tell us that you could do that, that, that this is the standards under which you will operate? Yeah. When? Show me. There isn't. And they've, effective, they've effectively made they're, themselves. So they're part of the executive branch, but they're also now made themselves a part of the legislative branch in terms of the way that they are creating law by changing these rules and the judiciary from the standpoint that they're saying, well, we're going to rule that this is exactly what this particular federal law says. And this is what it means. Go ahead. Right. But it, again, I think it gets worse. And I'll tell you why. Okay. We spoke with the Department of Justice nine months ago. OK. Mm -hmm. And the Department of Justice let the ATF know that until we come up with certain standards, 
and make those publicly, publicly available, that the ATF wasn't to make any directives until they did that. Okay, And I thought, great, we're finally getting somewhere now. Yeah. Well, instead of... <laughs> Can I swear on the show? Am I allowed to yeah, do that? You are. I'm, 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 I'm going to bleep yeah. it because of YouTube because then they'll, they'll limit the so, reach. <laughs> essentially, the ATF took that as a fuck you from their boss. Okay. And mm. they said, oh, fuck you. And they said, oh, no, no, no. Fuck you. Okay. And essentially gotcha. what they did is they took their criminal side and went after people because why? Because, well, DOJ only told us that the industry side, we shouldn't be doing anything. Well, mm. if the ATF doesn't know what makes up a brace and doesn't if the if the civil side the industry side mm -hmm. doesn't have available standards what in god's name atf makes you think that you should take the armed branch of the atf and go after people with criminal like criminal consequences yeah. to, 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 to attempt to put people in prison and take away their rights over something that you still don't know anything <laughs> about you don't know how to make up standards yet no. it's crazy it's like the it's joke not. is, and it's funny. I talk, we talk to the same people. Mm -hmm. The joke is, what do we live in Russia? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and now I have the proof. Yeah. Now, why do you it's think, crazy. from your perspective, why do you think they went after Q specifically? Well, I mean, it's to me, it's obvious. They 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 think that they're pick, they're strong with the weak. Mm. Okay. Okay. Very weak, but strong. Uh, how many, I mean, we've, like I told you, we've <laughs> sold, what, three million braces? Mm -hmm. You think they've gone to, you know, the big boys? I mean, I'm not trying to get them to go there now. Yeah, but, but I mean, yeah. haven't gotten to them. You yeah. know, they've gone to all these little small little companies. Gotcha. And, okay. They're you know, picking they the haven't fights. gone after the big boys. Well, to me, that just shows how nefarious all of this is. Yeah. Not to mention, I, I have direct contact with the ATF. They know I am. They can come to me and tell me that they have issues. Do you think in all of these years they've come to me and said, Alex, you know, they've come to me saying they, they've come to us once talking about marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't like the fact. So the ATF apparently doesn't like the fact that you use their logo. So you're not supposed to use uh, the ATF logo. Okay. So anybody who's out there, don't use the ATF logo because the ATF doesn't like that. Let's see what happens now. <laughs> anyway. Please. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Trust me, I understand the frustration. I do, I do. Um, so, where do you see things going from here? What's the the like the legit? What's the actual state of things right now as we speak, with respect to this whole situation? So, um, what what I can tell you is that the right people are working on this. Mm -hmm. um, I think the White House understands that this is an issue that needs to be taken care of. Uh, I think the Department of Justice understands that the manner in which things were done was done is not the right way to do it. Yeah. I, I am fairly certain um, that we will we will get a, a, a good conclusion to this to this story. Um, I'm fairly certain of it. But there's standard procedures to everything. Yeah. And as we're dealing with the government, it's not a light switch, as I've been told. You know, you can't just flip the switch and make things go away. There needs to be discussions. I, I do feel that there are some really great people at ATF. Yeah. I know that those people are involved, and I feel like cooler heads will prevail. I mean, again, this is not – the letter is not a letter saying braces are being banned. The, yeah. the letter is saying that ATF essentially wants to be able to look at guns holistically and decide based on uh, criteria that we obviously don't know don't about, know about but yeah, yeah. that they, they'll know when they see – um, that they're going to decide whether something is a brace or isn't a brace. Well, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I think that that needs to be discussed. But I think once that's discussed, uh, you're the legal guy here. I think that legally anybody will say that that's not the way the ATF can do it, especially because of the executive orders of the president uh, that he came out with back in, in January. Essentially, all of this goes against the president's executive orders. Gotcha. So, think that they, if they follow the president's executive orders that that they'll understand that that uh, procedures and publicly available standards need to be made and once they are we can we can move forward and get to the bottom of things gotcha so for anybody is there anything that you know just uh, uh, us old regular citizens out here in the world in in the gun world that we can do to help um that you would suggest that they do 
Um, so SP Tactical on Instagram, um, and then I'll make sure that you get all of the proper links so that you can post them so that people okay. can go there. Um, and Q has done this in, in very well in the letter that they posted on their website. They give you one click to go to uh, you know, the Department of Justice to let them know. There's a White House link, and then there are the people that handle um, you know, they help manage the ATF. They're politicians. They're people that work in Congress. Gotcha. Uh, you know, so I think all of those we can, you should have available to, to people to see somewhere on when, when you clean this all up and take out all my banned language. Um, <laughs> so you do that, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get you all of that. I okay. think what people need to understand is that they need to communicate. They need to call people out. They need to contact their congressmen. They need to, whatever they can, talk to the NRA. If you don't like the NRA, talk to somebody else. Yeah. But you need, to, you need to go to somebody. I, I will tell you, um, and I hope I don't make any enemies over this, I will tell you that the NRA, and I have my issues with them, mm-hmm. okay, I will say that we're not going to make a show about that because we could talk for hours about that, mm-hmm. but they have stuck their necks out for us, and they have been in all of these meetings, and they've been of great help. Okay. Um, Hopefully they'll follow through and hopefully we'll come to a good conclusion because of their help with their help gotcha. instead of instead of their help. Absolutely. So right now there's a culture war against the Second Amendment, which is why I need your help spreading our message to counter their message. You can help do this by leaving a comment, sharing this video and clicking the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice and let them know you want to keep America tactical because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion. It was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to purchase your AR-15s are essential, I will not comply. I am the militia. I lost all my guns in a boating accident and your state specific Keep America Tactical shirt. Click the link next to my head or the link in the description section, or if you're watching this on a mobile device, tap the small triangle on the lower right hand side of this video and click the link in the description.